I didn't want to sit at a desk for a living, and I went as a as an athlete myself back in the day. I injured myself and went to physical therapy, and I enjoyed what they were doing, and they because they're helping people, they're walking around, they're not sitting at the desk, and they get to communicate with a bunch of different people, which I like talking to people, and they were helping me out, so I was like. Ever since eighth grade, I wanted to be a physical therapist, which was kind of rare, I think. I mean, honestly, I love communicating with people, helping people. Um, day to day, I like getting to know my patients. That's why I'm not a surgeon. That's, not, that's why I'm not an MD, because I get to spend like an hour with every patient a couple times a week for a couple weeks, and then I really get to know someone, so we'll get... I mean, you build a lot of relationships that way, and I'm hooked up with a lot of people now. If I ever need some, I'm pretty sure, because they realize I helped them, and for the most part, they say that their lives changed, and they're better people for coming here, which is what I enjoy. It's knowing and then getting motivating, too. A, a huge part of it is motivating, because I could tell you to do 20 of these exercises, and then if I don't motivate you to actually do it, because that's the hard part. Most people know what they need to do. It's just getting them to do it is the hard part. So we try to keep a positive atmosphere and keep it upbeat because, it's, I mean, when people come in with pain, usually it's not a happy time in their life and they're depressed. And I don't know about you, but when I'm sick, I'm like laying in bed, thinking about what I'm wasting my life. So it's the same thing when you're injured. Long-term rehab, rehab after surgery or anything like that is hard. So if we can get people uplifted and then get them moving and show them they have to reach this step to get to that step, and then that step will ultimately leave, lead to their goal, then they're usually pretty happy about it because they have a clear path. I mean, it's tough to say. There's like, there's some PT clinics that are mainly, their, their goal is to make money because, again, it is a business, and those typically you could, I mean, there's usually a lot of people, there's no manual work. I think what sets a good physical therapist place apart from a bad one would be the amount of manual work. So we, we try to do 30 minutes of manual one-on-one -on -one with the therapist and then specific exercise based on what the injury is to rehab, get you back to whatever you want to do. Yeah. And usually you are sweating. If you're just doing easy exercise, they're not working you hard enough because we like to push people hard. Yeah, honestly, it's hard because there's so, it's hard. It's just like any marketing. They can fool you into anything. So looking at a website probably is not the best. I would, what most people do and what a lot of people do is they get recommendations from a doctor, but even then the doctor could have a, some kind of funny relationship with the therapist as well. So usually if you ask the doctor and then they give you a list and then you can call the place and ask them specific questions and kind of see where their head's at and if you think it'd be a good fit. I don't mind if people come in here and just watch us if they want to the first time without scheduling anything just to come in and see what we're like. That's fine with me too and I think that's if a PT clinic doesn't want to do that, I think they're hiding some. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.